know, uh, getting into the UFC for me was it was it was hard because I think I was trying out for the very first Ultimate Fighter show. I think they were all heavyweights, and uh, I didn't like the contract. And I asked Joe and Dana. I remember I, I made it all the way to the final rounds, and I was asking uh, everything I've done so far is to get to the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> right when we get to this peak, I saw the contract, and I was like, man. I, I don't like that contract. I, I can't accept the contract. I talked to my managers. I talked to my coaches, and I said, I don't want that contract. Uh, let's ask them to change it. And this is the very first UFC tough show, you know. They're like, oh, it should be an honor for him to to sign up and this and that. And my manager told him, said, no, unless you guys can change certain things in the contract, Brandon, he doesn't want this contract. He he much rather just wait. And I remember Joe and Dana weren't very happy about it and said, uh, you know, if he doesn't sign this contract and make it on the show, we probably won't use him again for a while. We won't need him because we're going to have heavyweights from the tough show. And I remember when they told me that, and told me about hard decisions, that's, that's what they tell you. And now you're like, well, you, you sign this contract that I really didn't want, or I just wait and I better myself to get a contract I do want. I believed in myself, I believed in my coaching, and I believed in the people surrounding me. Super hard, hardcore. Kevin, you we went through that together, right? Yeah. And uh, told the wife, and just crossed my fingers, and I told Dana and Joe, said, "No, thank you. I'd rather wait for a contract that I, I can, I can use." So I didn't get any of fame from the TV time, none of that stuff. And they said, "Okay, we'll call you back whenever we need you." Click. Right when we hung up the phone, I was thinking, "Oh man." Maybe, maybe we should call them back. Maybe we should call them back. No, stick to your guns, stick to your guns. Now you have at least six months to a year to get better. You can just train harder and get better. So okay, we can do that. We'll just train harder and get better. Three weeks later, they called and asked if I would fight on the UFC in the Hard Rock. You know, man, I, I think about this a lot. You know, I've got to do a lot of soul searching, especially throughout my whole life, man. I made some bad decisions, some good ones. But I wouldn't trade any of my bad decisions or my good decisions. If I had a time machine to go backwards, I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't be the person I am now if I didn't go through the game of life the way I did. Have you guys ever read those books that uh, you get to the bottom page, say, if you say yes, turn to page 80, you say no, turn to page one of those books. Don't choose your own adventure. <laughs> Sorry? Choose your own adventure. Choose your own choose adventure. Your own adventure. It, that's kind of like the game of life, brother. Uh, yeah. Choose that page and run with it, for sure. Choose that page and run with it. And as long as you've learned from your mistakes in the past, I, you're going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine. I, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. And I think because of the life I've lived, I am where I am right now. Wow. Uh, I thought I was going to go to the Olympics to wrestle. I My goal was to become a national champion, uh, a collegiate national champion, and I did that. And um, after that, I was like, man, I'm gonna go to the Olympics. And it, it was it was crazy. I, I, I in, in college, I took second in the nation my sophomore year. And at that point, I was like, I should have won. Now I'm gonna win national championship. And as soon as I get done with that, I'm gonna go to the Olympics. 2012, boom, 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 had everything planned out. Then, when it came around to uh, you know winning national championship my senior year, I won and I said, I'm good. I'm going to fight now. Just like that. Just like that. I decided, I, I, I accomplished my goal, and you know, almost immediately I, I made another goal. For, for me, it's all about respecting the person that I'm working with. Like we have great coaches now. We like like Frank said, we were in the gym last night. We left at about 10:15, and it was just myself and Frank and our two coaches. And you know, the, the fact that they're making that commitment to us means that I've I've got to replicate that. I've got to I've got to pay that back to them. Um, and you know, I mean, there are a lot of a lot of good coaches around the sport, but you know, sometimes you, you find a good coach that you just don't click with. 
we're fortunate enough. We've, we've got great coaches now, and, and if they if they tell me I've got to do something, I respect them enough to, to listen to it. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm putting I'm putting them in a position. I'm putting myself in a position as a student under them because I I, I believe in what they've got to say. Um, I mean, you know, we all we all have disagreements with coaches, and the problem with mixed martial arts is not everybody knows best, and we'll all have disagreements with all kinds of different things. And you know, sometimes I feel like I'll know better, but you just got to talk it out. I mean, there's always a there's always a a, a route to get the the solution solved. Um, but it's just about respecting the person that you're working with, and, and I know that if I'm getting that respect, I'm, I'm getting that respect. I've got to I've got to feed it back to them. So that, that's that's why I, I try and stay studious because because I respect the people that I'm working with. I'm the type of person that I feel like it might be even a less experienced person. You know, I'll at least listen to them and see what they have to say first. Um, when I go back to Hawaii, there's not too much. I think there's myself and you know BJ's retiring on there's one other young kid that's fighting now still in the UFC from Hawaii so every time I go back you know everybody's pretty much um, you know maybe they've been fighting a long time but as far as where we're at right now in the sport you know they're less experienced and I don't feel like they can't teach me anything I'll still if they you know if they saw something I did wrong I'll still take the time to listen to what they have to say and if I can use it, then I use it. And if not, then I'm not going to go throw it in their face and tell them, hey, look at me. I'm in the UFC. I don't care what you have to say. Um, but that's just me. So I believe in you know respecting everybody and treating people the way you'd want to be treated. No, no. Actually, I was talking about what I call a logical fallacy. It's a thought process when you discredit someone from saying something because they're not in a position to prove that they can actually have the, uh, you know, experience in saying so to be like you know how dare you talk to me about fighting you've never fought that's actually a way of when you discredit the person speaking about information you're trying to discredit the information information is true whether or not the person saying has the validity of you know bearing weight through experience so I don't ever do that uh, I take from information from everybody because if it's a correct statement it's a correct statement if I'm watching a fight someone says look you dropped your hand here that's why you got caught I don't sit there and go well how much boxing do you have that'd be asinine it would be retarded um, so uh, you sit there and go it's true but at the same time there's people of great knowledge that have maybe a great repertoire of uh, you know uh, of experience and they say something and it's wrong because I could sit there and uh, that's one thing I'm very much of a scientist you know I, I you know I pretty much approach life that way um, the good thing about MMA is it's pretty much proofs in what's being said you know it's like well this works this doesn't you can look at percentages just like in, you know in most things in life um, so I think the first thing I do with my coaches is that uh, I unequivocally trust that my best interest is their primary goal. I think anytime you trust somebody, you have to first think that that person has no other alternative uh, intentions besides what's best for you. So I know when my coaches say something to me, it could be very negative, and, and, and actually, they're actually most of the time trying to be more positive than I am. I'm a very negative individual when it comes to criticizing myself. Um, it's funny because you talk about after a win. I remember at the Noguera fight, I walked inside the octagon, and I don't know if anybody's seen the fight, but in the first minute, I, or two minutes, I got zapped pretty good with the right hand. It was a little hazy after that, and then I woke up and, and had him in a camor, and his arm didn't make it. Uh, uh, so I made it through. So it, it's actually, you know, it's probably going to win an award for like, you know, uh, best submission of the year. Everybody keeps talking about it. It was one of the ESPN thing. When I got back to the locker room, everybody else was celebrating, and I was. I rate. I was angry. I didn't want to speak to anybody at first. And the first words out of my mouth, what Gibbs says, is like, I'm dude, I'm sorry. I apologize. I screwed up. He's like, wait a minute, you just broke some guy's arm. You just won the fight. I'm like, no, but it sucked up until that point and this. I did this wrong. I'm always looking at what I can do to improve. I never really sit on what I do well. I think that once you, even when I'm coaching, it's funny, I'll be in the locker room, someone's or in the gym after practice, they'll say, oh, you did this really well. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, it's over with. I do it well. Who cares? Tell me what I do wrong. Tell me all the things that I need to fix so that I can be a better person, so I can be a better martial artist, so I can improve. I don't really want my ego stroke. Who cares? That's uh, frivolous.